Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I hope. I love Deadpool 2. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Today, we're not wasting any time. The X-Force will finally come together on the big screen when Deadpool 2 hits theaters this week. So we're breaking down the history of the X-Force. In the late 80s and into the 90s, Rob Liefeld had become something of a rock star comic book artist, which gave him the freedom to create a bunch of characters for Marvel. Of those characters, most were associated with the New Mutants and X-Force, including Cable, Domino, and Deadpool. Inevitably, Rob, along with writer Fabio Nichezza, brought all these new characters together to create a team called the X-Force, and they first appeared in the New Mutants issue 100 in April of 1991. The team then went on to earn their own self-titled book in August of that same year. However, Liefeld only drew the X-Force title until issue 9, and left the series entirely after issue 12. The reason he left is because he became pissed off that he did not own the characters he created, and was getting little to no royalties when his art was being used for a bunch of different merchandise. So he, along with several other popular Marvel artists at the time, like Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee, left Marvel Comics in 1992 to form Image Comics. That said, Fabian Nisheja would continue to write X-Force, and Greg Capullo, who is now widely known for for his work on Spawn and Batman would take over the drawing duties for the X-Force title starting with issue 14 and ending with issue 27. And I got to say, I still love Capullo's issue 15 cover with Deadpool and Cable on it. But let's take a gander at X-Force's comic book origin. X-Force was formed and named towards the end of the New Mutants issue 100. Basically what happens in the issue is the Danger Room alarm goes off saying it has an intruder. So Cable, Warpath, Cannonball, and Domino go check it out. And when they open the Danger Room, they see some strange guy fighting off the Danger Room's defenses. So naturally, they all start attacking him while asking who he is and what he wants. Domino manages to get the upper hand on him, but Cannonball interferes and gets his butt handed to him. So Cable jumps in and is of course the one who gets the mysterious new guy to say that his name is Shatterstar a blood warrior of the Cadre Alliance. Cable then knocks him out with a swift right, and the team restrains him. When he wakes up, Shatterstar tells them that he has been sent by the Cadre Alliance to seek the heroes of legend, known as the X-Men. He needs their help to defeat the oppressive rule of Mojo and his executioner Spiral, as his Alliance Rebellion is almost undone. Shatterstar then looks at them and says, but it's apparent that in regard to my mission, I have failed. You don't look like the X-Men I have seen vid of. Cable then interrupts him and says, no, no, we're quite better, and if I were inclined to believe your story, we could more than fill their role. Right after that, members of the Imperial Protectorate teleport in to attack Shatterstar. So the New Mutants join forces with Shatterstar and manage to fight them off. But Mask and his subterranean goons try to take Feral with them on the way out. Thankfully, Cable steps in and is like, no, she wants to stay, and shoots one of them in the head. Afterward, when the team is able to finally regroup, Cable explains to them that Shatterstar has agreed to join the team, and in return for helping him fight his war, Shatterstar will help the team fight theirs. Feral also agrees to join the team in return for asylum from her Morlock oppressors. Cable goes on to say that they have more enemies now than ever and can no longer stay in their underground bunker. He also says that it's time they became a force for change in the world, to which Warpath responds, take Professor Xavier's dream and fight for it, and Cannonball says, and X-Force? A little crude, but it's got some possibilities. The first 1991 X-Force series was a massive success. However, the 90s was the artist era, and fans were literally buying books purely based on whether a popular artist was drawing it. So once Liefeld left the X-Force title, the series started to lose its popularity, and sales began to tank. This forced Marvel to change things up, in an attempt to make the book fresh and exciting again. And with those changes, we got a story called The Executioner's Song. The story overlapped into almost all the X-Men related titles, and focused on Strife, Cable's evil clone, framing Cable for an assassination attempt on Professor X, which led to a fight between the X-Men and X-Force. Awesome, I know. By the end of the story, Cable had seemingly died, but of course, he turned out to be very much alive and returned in X-Force issue 25. The book then kind of fell off again in popularity as it began following soap opera-like plots, until inevitably the title went on hiatus for the Age of Apocalypse crossover event. The repeated dip in sales led to the X-Force being given a brand new creative team after the Age of Apocalypse event, Writer Jeff Loeb and artist Adam Polina were brought on, and they drastically revised the team in issue 44. Loeb introduced new team costumes, which in my opinion were kinda meh, 
but he also had the team move in with the X-Men at the X-Mansion, and placed emphasis on the character-driven stories with fewer fight and action scenes. During this run, we also saw Cannonball join the X-Men, as well as new revelations about Shatterstar's origin. By 1997, writer John Francis Moore took over and rebuilt the team away from Cable and the X-Men. This new roster was comprised of Meltdown, Siren, Sunspot, Warpath, and Moonstar. The following year, Cannonball and Domino also rejoined the team, only to see the X-Force title cancelled in 2000. The X-Force title was then revived and cancelled yet again between 2001 and 2002, until it finally saw some success in 2004 with a six-issue X-Force miniseries by the original creative team of Nisheza and Liefeld. This was then followed by a four-issue prequel series, the X-Force Shattered Star miniseries. Then finally, in 2008, we got the modern incarnation of X-Force that most of us are familiar with and love. In this new incarnation, Cyclops forms a Black Ops version of X-Force that uses lethal force to permanently get rid of threats against mutants. The team's starting lineup consisted of Warpath, Wolfsbane, Wolverine, and X-23, with Angel, Domino, and Elixir joining soon after. This is probably the most popular and fan-loved version of the team because, let's face it, Deadly Mutants and Black Ops combined is everything I've always wanted in my life. The title ran for 28 issues and also gave the team their popular black and gray outfits, including one of the coolest looks for Wolverine ever. In 2010, we got the Uncanny X-Force, which introduced new team members like Psylocke, Phantom X, and the Merc with the Mouth, Deadpool. Marvel now redid this title in 2013 with Psylocke and Storm leading the new team of outcasts and scoundrels, including Puck, Spiral and the Mysterious Cluster, and they're all going after X-Men legend Bishop. Then in 2014, Marvel Now gave us yet another X-Force book, this time written by Simon Spurrier, during which we follow the team of Marrow, Cable, Psylocke, and Phantom X, as they race Volga through the Brazilian jungle and battle France's superhuman Black Ops team. Lastly, we have the Cable and the X-Force title, which shows the X-Force on the run and being pursued by the uncanny Avengers. But with that said, let's take a look at the team's powers and abilities. Powers and abilities for a team like the X-Force is pretty hard to break down, as it has several characters and they're always changing. So to avoid confusion, let's stick to the original lineup. First you have Cable who's a telepathic, telekinetic, time-traveling mutant with a metal arm. Domino has the power of good luck on her side, which causes most situations and actions to go in her favor. Not to mention, she's a great fighter. You have Warpath who has enhanced strength, speed, durability, reflexes, and senses. Then there's Cannonball who possesses the ability to bodily generate thermochemical energy and release it through his skin, effectively making him a human cannonball rocketing through the air. Shatterstar has enhanced strength, speed, agility, durability, and healing. He can also focus energy through his custom double-bladed swords to create concussive force blasts. Next up is Feral, a humanoid cat that has feline characteristics, such as cat-like agility, animalistic sensory perceptions, and superior fighting abilities. She also has incredible jumping ability along with deadly claws and fangs. Finally, the last of the original X-Force members is Boom Boom. I know it's a horrible name, but that's why she's gone by other names like Boomer, Time Bomb, Meltdown, and Firecracker. It's a lot, I know. Anyway, her powers allow her to psionically generate, release, and reabsorb plasma, fiery-like energy, which she calls Time Bombs that explode with concussive force. Needless to say, as a team, they're a force to be reckoned with. If you want to dive into some X-Force for yourself, which I recommend you do, start by reading X-Force Omnibus Volume 1, X-Force Volume 1 Sex and Violence, X-Force Force to be Reckoned With, Cable and X-Force Classic Volume 1, and X-Force Volume 1 Angels and Demons. First up for Wednesday, May 16th, we have Cable Issue 157. Cable returns to the Hellfire Hunt, but will he be able to find sanctuary from the techno-organic villain from the far future? Next we have Weapon H Issue 3. This issue is Hulk Wolverine slash Weapon H versus The Brood. Now we have Superman Special Issue 1. Superman's world is about to change in a big way, but before it does, the Man of Steel has some unfinished business to attend to on Dinosaur Island. And finally, we have Justice League No Justice Issue 2. The team arrives at Brainiac's homeworld to find it already in chaos. Only by splitting up and going to the four cosmic trees of Kalu will they have any hope of saving the planet. And that's going to do it for today's episode, but don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you like the channel, be sure to subscribe and then hit the bell next to it so you're notified whenever we upload a new video. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics. <laughs>